Still going in again. Say it's going to be But the Nexus is open. No one makes his way back in. But he's not going to do it. Captain makes a clutch play. And Fnatic do the unthinkable and make their way to the quarterfinals. Welcome everybody to Worlds Tonight. After the start of week two of the group stage, I'm joined here by the Fischio and by Kobe. Oh, guys, what a day. And that was day one, by the way, of week yeah, two. Yeah, baby. Uh, we got some Europe hype here, right, Kobe? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm all aboard. Fnatic, woo! The West, we did it. <laughs> hey, no That's matter... team, true. The West, we did it. Is that how we're playing this? All right, because I think uh, no matter who you were a fan of, today was a bit of esports history. Absolutely crazy. Let's cast our minds back to the beginning of the day and how the standings were coming into this uh, because there were a couple of interesting storylines. Would Longju go undefeated? Would Immortals win a couple of games and secure that spot that they worked for so hard with the Marines do it. Fnatic, nobody was even thinking about them. I mean, for good reasons, right? Yeah. Zero three looked super rough. Uh, I think what's funny is to think back to the first two games, especially Immortals, Gigabyte Marines. Had Immortals won that game and Longshu beaten Fnatic like they did, it was basically locked in stone that Longshu would be first and Immortals would be second in this group and Fnatic were just done. But Gigabyte Marines, man, they won the first game. They started that little snowball. Gigabyte Marines, man, they definitely came to play again, right? At MSI, they impressed everyone. Yet again here at Worlds Group Stage, though, what a contender. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Uh, however, they would only win this game today, though. Uh, and one more so, uh, it wasn't... They peaked last week. They peaked last <laughs> week, and maybe that's the way to say it. But this was a fantastic start, and we have to give them credit where credit is due with the innovative picks again and with Levi going off. Yeah, of course. And I mean, they had games later where they almost beat Longshu. Mm -hmm. They were like 10K gold ahead. The Fnatic game at the end was very close. So Gigabyte Marines are obviously showing they are a very legit team, and they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with all the teams from the major regions, which is very impressive considering it's been like the first year, basically, for Gigabyte Marines, and they are still coming from one of the emerging regions. So I think just, you know, Fantastic to watch a team have unique strategies, but also sometimes try and play standard and still do fine with it. It's not like they just crumble completely when they don't play these unique strats. Yeah, but as you said, that's what started the snowball of all the craziness that day. And Kobe, as the, as the NA casters, what happened to Immortals? Maybe starting with that first game and how did you kind of see them fall throughout the day? Honestly, there there were a lot of mistakes that we were seeing in from places that we hadn't seen them from before with Immortals. And, and then they all kind of culminated here in what felt like an avalanche towards memeing, right? Like North America, <laughs> zero ten. We started out the day as soon as they oh, lost yeah. the first game. And we're like, ah, ha, 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 it's not going to happen, yeah. right? And then a as it continues, you're like, oh, no. It's all going downhill from here. Um, if I had to pick out like one thing at the very beginning, first of all, we were pointing to Poe Belter, how well he had played in week one and how he had Jinxed stood up. He, I mean, yeah, it's, you feel like that afterwards, but he had been absorbing so much pressure, you know, so much jungle pressure and not dying and not giving up, uh, you know, a lot of uh, momentum around mid lane mm -hmm. there for, for them. But then this week, it, the gang started to find effectiveness on him. Um, you know, they got a lot of kills there. But that being said, it, it was not just one factor. There mm -hmm. were so many other factors that compounded uh, to the losses here from Immortals. It, it came down, and a lot of them also, to late game decision making, late game mistakes. So, I mean, yeah, I think so. Draft obviously was questionable in, in some of the games where it was like, why wouldn't you take a Janna here and then ban Talia Gallio against Longshu as an example? And they didn't do that, and it got much harder for them. But one of the concerns I feel like we talked about regarding Immortals coming into this uh, tournament was like, okay, Cody Sun and Poe Builder on the world stage, are they good enough to just carry late game team fights compared to some of the other big names we see? And I think today, Poe Builder and Cody Sun could not do mm -hmm. it. It's, I'm not purely blaming them. There's obviously five members on this team, but we didn't have that one game where I felt like okay, Immortals, they're going to win late game because Cody Sun is like 10-0. He's going off. He's going to carry the team. And I feel like we've seen that from other AD carries already. Yeah, I mean, it needs to be pointed out. We don't want to keep ragging on them, but this is a project of a year, right? They still made it here. They still had a first, first week, and they're going to have to just take learnings from this because with the demise of Immortals today came the steady rise of Fnatic because every time one of those games happened and the one straight after was Immortals versus Fnatic. So the big question was... Can Fnatic now do it? Can they beat Immortals? And can Immortals bounce back? And this is really, for me, where all the craziness began. This one play, yeah. right here, started everything. This game was basically lost. Fnatic would not win late game teamfights unless Immortals made a huge mistake. And that's what happened right here. 
Yeah, I mean, there's so many different points in that very long play that originated with Immortals having Baron buff and being at the secondary turret there that you can go back and nitpick on. But again, there were so many different things that came together uh, to contribute to each of the individual losses here. And it it was definitely heartbreaking for, for the team and for this organization. And also, this is then the first game of the tiebreaker set, right? Where Fnatic just rolled over more yeah, all I mean, of a sudden. This felt lost after like five, six minutes into mm. the game where Fnatic had picked up a few kills. They had this super smart Malzahar pick as well from Caps. And it was just like, wow, Fnatic are playing super well at the moment and Immortals are just kind of falling apart. The Israel never really worked for them in the jungle either. Yeah, I feel like one thing that was maybe over-exaggerated was the uh, mental collapse of Fnatic after week one. Uh, so as often, you know, he lets out steam in, in very public ways. And so everyone's like jumping on this and like all the individual players are talking about, yeah, we have a lot of these, you know, background problems and, you know, internal problems that are being solved. But whatever they did, at least was whether it was a Band-Aid or not, you know, they were able to get through I'll the, tell you, the mean time so between us. week one and I week two. I asked us so what was it, and he said it was that game versus yeah. Immortals. It was that moment in the bottom lane. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. Like, I, I know it sounds like a buzzwordy cast of narrative, like, oh, momentum and confidence, <laughs> but we know these guys from Fnatic so well. We've followed this specific team as well for, for a year now, and... It's been always this kind of situation where when things are going wrong for Fnatic, they're losing, confidence drops to a zero. And they have such a hard time climbing out again. Sometimes they need big changes. In Spring Split, the big change was Kennen to carry and playing this kind of style because they were actually playing standard and were losing. They changed it up and it was a big momentum swing and they've done it again now. And it's, it's fun how one play in one game gives them a win, gives them confidence, and they just roll, roll over the rest. Uh, the fish show as us watching that team so closely in EU. Um, I don't want to get too deep into this, but they pulled it out today. We're going to see in a second how they also beat the Marines in a close game, but Rift Rivals, something that they had to step up to the plate, didn't work out. Playoffs in the end, only at the end did they find their form. Week one of groups, worrying trend. I know it's a buzzword as well, but uh, they're going to have to do something to make sure that does not happen again after game one of a quarterfinal or even in this week in between. I mean, it's... It's a good and it's a bad thing that your team needs a good start to a series because if Fnatic can win the first game of whatever BO5 they're going to play, that's going to help them a lot. But there's also, of course, the chance that they lose the first game. And it's hard for Fnatic, I think, to fix all, all uh, fix everything because they are a team that relies on big individual outplays. They will take gambles in the way they're playing and they will never play a super clean game where it's like this slow macro style we see from other teams. It's fast. Yeah, I feel like it's just been such a roller coaster of a year for that team. I mean, they, they're just on ups for most of the regular season. You know, Rift Rivals was down, back up for playoffs. It's, well, now week two, at least they're on an upswing and that's when it matters. Well, they ended on an upswing. They had that decider game versus the Marines and obviously a lot of people are also looking at the Marines because it almost looked like they were the best team out of the three remaining but it came down to a very scrappy one where some people, so as Caps, really, <laughs> really made their mark. Yeah, exactly. And Geek by Marines sat backstage, watched the Fnatic Immortals game, and probably said, we can beat this guy by playing standard. Hmm. So they came into this with the most standard draft they've shown all tournament long, uh, actually. And it was very slow in the start, and they were actually falling quite far behind. But they had some of these moments where they could get back. Yeah, the biggest thing at the beginning was how much Fnatic destroyed bottom lane. Reckless uh, and Jezz's absolutely, you know, pushed them out of lane. The seven minute turret or something by themselves in the bottom lane. Mm. Um, and then being able to rotate quickly and take all those outer turrets, you felt initially like there's this big swell of momentum for Fnatic again, to, to reuse your term there. Uh, but then... Gigabyte Marines had a bunch of plays to get back in the game, and it was very interesting. And then yet again, it came down to a lot of these critical moments that will stand out in people's minds, uh, those big replays, all these five-on-fives around Baron yeah. and such. Crazy. And also, it's a game that Optimus will look back at and be very disappointed with himself in because he had multiple shockwaves missing, times where he had it on like a Maokai who engages and it comes back on, on, on his own head and he ends up ulting himself or misses in the last team fight. And those are the big moments you just need to be able to execute on if you want to win a game like this and move to the quarterfinals. Yeah, so I said in the final interview, um, it's almost better. We played 
without really expecting ourselves to go through. And we played game after game, and in the end, they came up clutch. And they did it, so let's take a look at the final standings, because that other thing we mentioned at the top of the day, that did happen. Longju is undefeated, and it's easy to get lost in the story of the day, but we have to give some props to that team for coming in. Bray for playing like an absolute monster today, and looking like an absolutely daunting candidate in the quarterfinals. Yeah, every single person on that team, they even included the substitute in their last mm -hmm. game versus Immortals, and still were able to go 6-0. Exactly, and you look at a team with great shot calling, good drafts, some of the best individual players in the world, and again, you have that little setup, like SKT have shown multiple years before this, that can obviously go all the way and win the entire tournament. So them being 6-0 is not a surprise, I think, for anyone. Uh, and it just shows like how dominant they are. Like Prey stats in the, the, that game with 1,500 damage per minute, like <laughs> that's absolutely insane. But also like I want people to go back and look at the team fights. Not a single person is at any moment even close to touching him. He just stands there and he just fires away the entire fight with Hurricane. And he's like, yep, this is yep. the easiest <laughs> fight of my life. Yeah, we was talking about how much time Cody Sun was, was spending trying to evade people and running around in circles. Prey was auto-attacking every second of every you know, team You're comparing fight. like a rookie on the world stage. No, but it's also about yeah, the comp, right? You have absolutely. a Janna protecting you as a Varos and the enemy team has no backline threats while Cody Sun is being chased down by three guys on mm -hmm, long shoe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, a, it's all in the compositions as well, but fantastic by them. Um, I feel like you guys are being, for an NA caster and an EU caster, it's very civil and factual about the drama that unfolded here today. Oh, we were dancing, oh, I was dancing around before the camera came on here. And <laughs> the thing what, is, what drama? <laughs> I, I don't see no drama here. No, exactly. Like, I'm not going to say anything. Fanatic won. That's yep. already enough. True. Uh, let's take a look at the schedule because... You you in the <laughs> Let's see what happens tomorrow because we have uh, another European team that is in peril and they start versus RNG. We have an RNG that is looking absolutely strong. Samsung with some question marks. So we'll see what happens there. Maybe Fenerbahce is upset. What do you guys think on tomorrow? I'm super excited for tomorrow's games. Um, RNG are actually looking really good and especially watching their games in the stadium with the Chinese crowd. Yeah. Every single little play gets, gets the biggest reactions. Um, and they're performing so well right now that I really think uh, they have an extremely good shot at getting out of this group. It's a really good meta. Obviously, Uzi in the late game can, can carry fights. Samsung, I'm kind of sad they didn't lose more games in the first week. Like, they should have lost that game against... Because <laughs> you want G2 to have a better standing. Yeah, because I wanted G2 <laughs> to have a chance, right? But Samsung is the kind of team who now will get exposed. They have a week to fix it. They will have another week, most likely, if they make it out of groups to fix it for quarterfinals. So they probably will be fine. I'm actually not too concerned about them. And I think it might end up just being G2 not making out of this group because I think Samsung will look better than week one, and I think RNG will continue looking good. So you're calling uh, RNG and Samsung, are you calling RNG first seed? I'm saying RNG first. Mm -hmm. Colby? We could very well have some more tiebreakers uh, from, from this group as well, but uh, that is what I put on my, actually on my pickums it was RNG and G2, I think. Damn, no Samsung. Wow. I think that's That's what just it was. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. We'll see tomorrow. Maybe uh, all the magic has been used up today. Fnatic was the third seed, by the way, coming out of Europe, and uh, they did a miracle run. We'll see what happens tomorrow. But I feel like it will be more along what we expect, but we never know. I mean, this is a harder group yeah. uh, with G2, Samsung, and RNG, and of course, Fenerbahce in it. So I think there's a higher chance that Samsung and RNG just show up and look really good and make it out. But obviously, G2 were very close already mm -hmm. to picking up some more wins. And if they win the first game against RNG, it's wide open. Yeah, they both advanced from a very similar group last year, so could could very well be the same two teams. We'll see what happens. Uh, I just hope that all the craziness keeps going and we get as many exciting games as we did today because it has been great. We're going to have to take not only a quick break, we're just going to take the night off, obviously, and come back tomorrow and be refreshed and watch another six, maybe eight, maybe more games. Thank you guys very much for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. Over the next four days, our competitors will fight to secure their spot in the quarterfinals, starting today with the teams in Group B. Legends never die when the world's coming. Man, Ulti's not going to be in range for Levi. Flashes! Digging in with the damage, going to be low, still gets him anyway. Blue Spike, they might have the first damage, but Fear Beyond Death not quite going to come through. No, it is! He's going to eat him! No. But he's going to get the kill! He's going to get the Sarah oh. five! And the Baron goes down, picked up. Now Cody's son, but he's up against oh. Barrier. Only picks up one kill. Urga cannot die. He will not be stopped. And this will be Gigabyte Marines improving two and two. Connor really wants this battle.
kills. So it's running out of health. Hopkins looks for the trade, but here comes Redemption. It's gonna be the kill. Ray Hurricane on. He wants them all. He's got one so far. Jess is next up for the block. The flash forward, a double kill. Still substantially faster than the group stage average. Longju take the fight, take it home. This is the game. Last game didn't happen. If we win this, we're in it. Grab is gonna come in and Brock's gonna kill him right on that one. And the flash bar comes in! Oh. The insect but betrays his teammate! And it's gonna be the ace for Fnatic! Hit the Nexus. Alemon, hit the Nexus. Oh, oh yeah. they got it again! Fnatic wanted more than knockdown of Ordo! To be true, Long Drew find their way back here. Fnatic leap forward, Broxa gets the kill on the can, and everybody's flashed in. Archie, the only one left, and Broxa finds the final execute with the ulti. They needed to win, and they have done it. You're now seeing the late game difference, the late game oh value my between God. and Lulu. That has to be a record. That is insane from Prey. Cody caught by Arata. That's gonna be it. Fnatic push through, take down the Nexus, and look. One more game, good. one more game. So it's Mega, Vito Vida, but he got the double kill. No way, still fighting him, but Fox with the Mega. Cat, he missed his shot down. Shockwave, no. No, 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 no. Kill Arena, kill Arena. No, no, he's just end the game. <laughs> Fnatic do the unthinkable and make their way to the quarterfinals.